here's where I want to start, Nemo. Um, we'll start with a quote, sure. which is this. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. When you hear that, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Emma Carey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you were paid to say that. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's kind of like my coaching philosophy, right? Um, so, yeah, I, I, I like working with athletes that, that you know, enjoy the work, enjoy the process, right? It's always like a bonus when they come with talent. So mm -hmm. not to say that Emma Carey is not talented. She's also really talented. Um, of course. But, you know, I would work with an athlete that is willing to put in the work day in and day out any day of the week. I don't care mm -hmm. where they are in their, like, journey versus mm -hmm. someone that's talented and, like, half of the time is telling me, oh, I just can't do this right now or, you know, is mm -hmm. distracted. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, this is my perception, but sure. I, I feel like CrossFit weeds those people out to an extent because it's so damn hard that, right. well, I mean, at least at the highest level, it's so damn hard that you don't have the opportunity. You, let me say it this way. You do not have the luxury of not working hard. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I, I mean, I feel like, and I feel like swimming is kind of the same way, or, or at least this is my perception of swimming. And, and this may be because I'm not great at it, right? Um, I'm not saying I'm great at CrossFit, but I, I feel like I'm better at CrossFit than I'm swimming. Um, I feel like swimming is so technically sound, or or, or you you need to be technically sound to to be good at it. Like it's it's not like a no pun intended. It's not just like a brute strength thing. Like oh, I'm really strong. I can lift some weight and bang it down. It's like no, like. You have to be really technically sound. And maybe that's my perception. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's where a lot of people um, that start swimming later, even even like competitive swimmers, like it's like that's where a lot of people get defeated is the technical mm. aspects of swimming. It's such a highly technical sport because of the environment. Um, so if you look at, I think the discrepancy between like, females and males in track versus females and males in swimming is mm -hmm. like 14 percent in track and seven percent in swimming because of resistance right so you have to be so careful with like how you're doing things it's not just like i'm gonna put like effort and mm -hmm. just like no pun intended like brute strength into it and just like like try to push as hard as i can and like get results out of that like i've experienced that as a triathlete now so running mm. and cycling you can just like try harder and usually it results to a better result in swimming it's rarely the case because of the environment okay so that's what you mean by because uh, I, I was I was trying to make sure i understood this that's what it, like well let me just ask what do you mean by resistance because you said there's like a seven so or... the drag forces that you face right so like okay. the water moving through water um is not like moving through air right so any wrong position is like makes you pay right so oh, okay. let's say gotcha. i'll give you an example <clears throat> so please do because i'm like a if, total novice if, yeah yeah no worries um so if you want you're swimming front crawl and you extend your arm completely straight and you push against the water um mm -hmm. It might be feel very powerful right and you might be like really strong can do like 20 plus pull-ups and all of that but just the fact that your arm is straight out this is all now resistance right and oh. so it may pay right that you're overcoming that drag force but in you have to kind of weigh it out right like so it might be better to be a little bit more efficient with your position so it's not just like i'm gonna rip through the water right <clears throat> you can't do that right so it just it's not just like application of force is really important but mm. form is also equally important if not more mm. important on the other side so it always has to be balanced out you can't just muscle through it 
maybe for very short distances, but even that you'll be, you'll have to pay. Sorry, let me just turn this off. I yeah. Have all good. these devices going off. Um, there we go. Um, yeah. So pretty much you always have to be like kind of balancing it out as you're getting stronger. Mm -hmm. It's like, what are the costs on the other side? Right? Like, okay. You put on muscle mass that, that affects you in the water, right? Like now that's extra weight that you have to carry. Um, so it's always that like game of like cat and mouse. It's like, okay, I'm getting stronger here, but now I'm losing efficiency. And so that's where a lot of, um, the technicalities come into play and why swimming is so important that you're like, not just like work. It's not just about doing the workouts. It's like, how are you doing the workouts? Like, mm. what's the form that you're going into it? And you can see people like, I'm sure you've witnessed it. I'm sure everyone's witnessed it. You've gone to a lane swim and you've seen that like older person swimming a hundred lengths every single day. And they're like, how do they do it? And like, but they're never getting faster, right? Like they swim a hundred lengths every single day and you can time them every single day. And they'll be the same time, same pace, right? <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> not to say that they shouldn't do that. That's it's great fitness, but I'm just saying you can be doing it forever and not improve. It's so funny that you say that. I, um, like most CrossFitters, we get into swimming because there's a competition coming up and you're like, oh shit, I got to swim. Um, and I was no different three years ago and uh it was my first of the kind and it was an open water swim it wasn't like like most are it wasn't in a pool uh geez that'd have been nice right stand up when you're tired whatever it's only four four and a half feet whatever um and anyways i i was living in raleigh north carolina at the time and i hired a swim coach um and this guy looked nothing like me he was tall lanky no muscle mass I, I, and i'm not hating on anybody i'm just just saying he looked nothing like <laughs> me um he was probably six four i'm six foot and 195 pounds which isn't like a, a ton but you know right anywho i would come in there and it was once a week for an hour and that was all i could that was, that was all like i had time to do with other training um and it was the most humiliating experience. And, and he was a phenomenal coach. Like, I'm so grateful. I learned a lot. And the reason I say it was humiliating, because I just sunk like a rock in a pool. And right. as I'm looking, and, and to your point, I'm looking over to my left, and there's Grandpa Jones just absolutely destroying it. And yeah, he's going slow. But he's on his 200th lap of the day, and I'm just trying to figure out how not to sink, you know? Uh, and it was eye-opening that this could really be that hard. I'm like, I'm damn it, I'm athletic. Like, I like to think I am. And I, in that moment, there was so much opportunity to learn and to, and to actualize, like, being a student of the game. And I have so much... I'm so glad I had that experience because I have so much more respect uh, for swimmers. And I'm not just saying this. Like I, like I really do. Like I have so much respect for the, you know people to go to the Olympics because it's not just get in there and to your point, it's not in there and just use, you know, your muscles and how strong you are. Like it really doesn't matter. Like, and I'm not going to say it's a finesse sport. I don't think it is. But it's I, – I think the fairest thing to say is it's a very technical sport. And um, I – yeah, I, there's no other way to say it. I'm 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 willing to say it on air. I was humiliated because I didn't realize how bad I was at swimming. So that's just a true story. Yeah, no, that's honestly how many people, um, like in a, at a later age, feel when they go start swimming or trying to learn to swim for the first time. Mm. So I think there's like a little bit of a taboo around it. Like, uh, there's so many other things that we learn as adults and swimming is like one of those things. It's like, if you didn't learn as a kid, it's like, how do you not know how to swim? Like, you know, so it's good to like, that's what we try to do at like sink or swim. We try to create an environment for, for adults where it's like comfortable. So someone like a CrossFitter or like yourself, like comes mm. in and it's like, yeah, like it humbles you, but there, you know, it's just like anything else. Like I'm sure that if you had asked your coach to like do a muscle up, he like, 
and be like, what? <laughs> Actually, maybe you would have done a strict one. That's about it. But like, I mean, you know, the coordination involved to do some of the things in uh, CrossFit is just as difficult, right? Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, yeah, I know. I mean, it is. Um, it, it was so funny because this is the last story I'll tell him this, but I just, I find it funny. Sure. He, you know, he, he like, like at one point he was like, hey, like, I just want to make sure like you're going to survive. Like like this is the conversation this guy's having with me. And I'm like yeah. I'm like what do you like what do you mean? Because like it's cuz look, I mean as in CrossFit everyone knows this, like you're not just swimming. Like you're doing other things with it. And this particular workout was awful. It had deadlifts and clean and jerks. I'll never forget it. And then you had to go swim so like your legs are blown the f up. Okay? Your back blown the f up. Your 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 hands. And anyways, uh, and so we're having this conversation and so they had this like, uh, and I'm sure there's a proper term for this, but it was a really like squ- square, really deep pool. Like in my mind, cause I want to be badass. in my mind, it was like where the Navy SEALs went to train and do their underwater training. Like, this is what I thought of this pool. Okay. So it, it was, it was square and, and it was like 12 foot deep. And the whole purpose of it is what he was telling me was like, it's teaching you how to tread water. And he was talking about the little beater thing and, you know, with your legs. Yeah. And he was like, have you ever treaded water? I was like, I don't know. I was like, man, I grew up with a pool. I was like, let's just, let's just go in there and do it. Uh, and he was like, well, stay close to the side. I was like, nah, I'll be fine. So anyways, here's the point of the story. So this guy puts me in this pool because he's afraid that I'm going to go out in this lake where I'm going to have the competition and drown. Okay. Right. So I go in the pool. And he's like, all right, we're just going to go for 30 seconds. So I go for 30 seconds. I was like, this is easy. So we go for a minute. I was like, no problem. So we're up to two minutes. And I was like, this is, in my mind, this is like where like just pure grit and determination happens. And I don't know how, how long is the standard tread water. It, it's probably 10 minutes. I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not a Navy SEAL. But in that okay. moment... I was up to three minutes, and I felt good about myself Uh, because I was like, man, I suck at swimming, but my God, when it comes to me not dying, I feel very confident. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, that's important, man. Like, he did did a good thing to to do that with you because um, the amount of, like, stories I've heard about, like, these mass starts at CrossFit competitions, and you're all good because you've learned to just swim in your lane at lane swim. And then some, because it's usually like master males and females and yes. like the guys don't care and they run over the ladies and <laughs> right. you hear all these stories of like, I was good until like, I got trampled. just like, but yeah, trampled over me. I'm like, what the heck? And then everything goes out the window, right? Like panic sets in. Uh, and it would be really good in that moment to know how to like chill and tread. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so he did a good job of uh, like having you go through that skill. <laughs> he did, yeah. I, I, I felt <clears throat> I felt really badass in the moment. Um, okay, so obviously, like, I want to get back to I want to get back to the you know swimming. But he, here's what caught my attention, and I, I when I texted you, I said, "Man, I'm really looking forward to this conversation." There were so many things that stood out, like about your story, that I felt um, were just really interesting and, and piqued my own curiosity. And, and one of those was that. You're from Serbia, and I, I don't. No one really, at least the, what I listened to, no one really got like tapped into this. But like, did you did you grow up there? Like, were you born there? Like, were your parents from there? Like, wh- what was that story? Mm-hmm. No, thanks. Uh, that's a, that's a good question. It's true. It's not asked a lot. So, uh, we moved to Canada. Like, my parents moved to Canada with me and my brother. I have a twin brother, mm-hmm. um, paternal. Um, so we don't look alike at all. Um, but we moved here when I was three years old. Um, and yeah, so like I grew up here, but, um, my parents would like send us back every summer, uh, for like long, like even more than the summer, like, let's say like three, four five months to Serbia to like, just be with my grandparents because our whole family's there. So up until I was probably like nine, I was mostly in Serbia for like almost half the year. So wow. I do have like a lot of my experiences from there. And at that time, it was like the former country, Yugoslavia. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, now you've piqued my interest. Like, what's it? 
what's it like there? Because like I have this thing in my head yeah. of what I think it's like, but what I mean, especially yeah. compared to somewhere like you know you live now. You said Canada, so I mean, yeah. Yeah. what's it? So, what's it like? <laughs> um, first of all, the country is like in terms of let's just talk about uh, just sports culture because that's yeah, the first ahead. thing that comes to my mind. Um, it's very much into like everyone from like you know children to like adults being um physically like capable right mm. uh and and it's there's a lot of investment in that it used to be a little bit more now less so the country's really proud of their athletes like the athletes that come back for example um from the olympics and if you wouldn't win a medal literally the whole country comes to like wait for you at like the city hall it's like over a hundred thousand people there's videos wow. on youtube like the water polo team when they come back or like um it, it's ridiculous so the pride around that like even we had a really good basketball team um i think we held like the world record for uh the amount of olympic wins until like the states started to like recruit their like pros and then now they're just unstoppable <laughs> <laughs> But we have exactly. like, anyways, like the, the the sports culture is like huge, and I think that like really, um, just like the the curiosity for learning is really important there. So in every aspect, like it's not. I tried to explain this to to people here. Um, like <clears throat> when my friends would ask me here to like go and play tennis, for example, and we'd go play tennis, like they would just like volley the ball over and I'd be so frustrated. I'm like, wait, you guys don't know how to play tennis. Like, I don't want to do this. Like, or if we go and like play volleyball, it's like, oh, you don't know. Like, you just want to like kind of volley in. Like, you know, it's like there, everything was about like, you, you got taught the sport and it wasn't just, here's a ball and just kick it around. Like if we were taught soccer, it's like, okay, they were like, the adults were really keen on teaching like the youth of like how to mm. properly play the sport um and and that curiosity of learning like spans everything so mm. i think that's like one thing that's really missed out about like that country because it's more worn tor war torn um that the people there are very curious very like intellectually driven sports driven and i think the sport actually it's like they fe feed into each other right like i think sport for development for kids is like huge right as like life lessons that you get out of it so I think the mentality, and again, used to be more of it, um, was that it didn't matter, like, like it was important to compete and stuff, but it was also important that you were active your whole life. So mm. it wasn't just like you and I being able to run a 10K, it was like our parents, our grandparents being able to be like physically able. So that that's kind of like the way that I would describe this country. And it, it has great ambassadors that you see, like, again, we promoted like Novak Djokovic is one that comes just like, I'm sure everyone knows him. Um, so that that's kind of like where the country leans and they love their athletes and because they see the, like the, the power that it brings to the youth and to everyone else as a whole. Mm. So when you, you said you were going there at like pretty, early uh, early age very i would say very moldable ages you know too right like right. seven eight nine like those are very impressionable like i don't have a ton of memories uh but i but there but there's some impressionable memories from that age right. um that i that i that i think i hold on to and uh for you what did like what did that look like i mean because uh, you're obviously in school but you said you're spending like half the time like did you have like dual citizen like ship where you're like going to yeah. school there or were you no because I didn't online school, school wasn't a thing yet yeah no right? no i didn't go to so like as, as we got older like so probably around like six seven eight like um when you get into those like grade school years like it was less time that we spent there but mm -hmm. still like at least our whole summer so yeah it was just like yeah like you said formative years um so a lot of like the way that I am today uh, comes from from those times, right? Am I still here? Did I yeah, cut out? yeah. You, you cut out for a second. Yeah. Uh, last thing I heard was um, so, those times. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So like those formative mm -hmm. years, right, of being there, 
um, they they're the reason that I am the way I am today. I would think, mm. and like you said, like maybe I can't remember some of those things exactly to a T, but there's some things that really stand out and that like carry over today. That's yeah. Do you? I mean, obviously, you talked about kind of this very like nationalistic like pride, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think mm -hmm. that's really. Um, I think that's I think that's really like unique um, about you know s some of these countries and, and and they're not all that way right like, I mean there's there there are countries that you know people aren't very proud uh, to be from but um, it's it's right. it, it's like really cool to hear someone say yeah I mean I like I'm like I'm I'm proud of that and like I own that um, you know you spoke a lot about hey look there's a lot of things that I learned that kind of made me to the person that I am today. Um, I mean, is there a particular memory, uh, a particular, I don't know, story that stands out to you that you go, man, this was, this was something that I've, I've carried to this day. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, trying to think something in particular, like, I think a few things stand out. Like I just, again, seeing how much like <clears throat> our athletes back there were, were supported and like backed up so that like always drove me to like i want to be there like i want to be that competitive in something that i do and then also just like um the the curiosity to learn i think that it's not i don't know i, I don't want to just make comparisons to other places but the one thing that i got was that um like just be be curious and then really dig into whatever you're learning mm -hmm. um and that there's like so many layers and I, I don't know just like taking pride of like like knowing your your topic and your subject and whatever we, you might be teaching mm -hmm. later like for me as a coach now it's just like that that it's not just like one one aspect of it like i, I don't know i guess like yeah no i i think the curiosity to learn um is is one thing that like stands out and i think that comes from like uh, my grandfathers, who are both engineers, so they looked everything at, at everything through a math mind, even mm -hmm. if it like through like even sport, right? It's like when you kick this ball, if you kick it in this section, this is why you want to kick it in, in like a whole math equation of like why it's better to kick it here for velocity and blah 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 and this and that. So I think I I think in that way too, but it it just like opens your mind to it's not just like you know the whatever the coordination or the motor skills it's like oh there's like math to this too and like i don't know that curiosity to learning is what i what i got from those at times do you still have family there yeah i do like all my family um all i'm lucky enough to have all my grandparents still alive um so all of them are there uh my uncles some cousins pretty much yeah everyone yeah. do you do you get to do you get to visit um, or uh, often or what's the, yeah. So I went not, not, a, not recently because of yeah. just how much uh, like work has taken over, but um, I did compete there for a while. So oh, for wow. like a time, like a year and a half to two years when I was maybe like 2014, uh, I went back there and I competed and uh, I trained there and got a chance to compete for my country. So that was like, the cherry on top of my under the cake for my like some career All right holy cow man yeah that's yeah. cool so you so at the time you excuse me you were living in canada right mm -hmm. yeah and then you um at some point go back um mm -hmm. well yeah how did how did that opportunity come about um i was just like uh so things are going well. I was uh, like swimming was kind of like taking off for me as an athlete. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, in the small town that I'm from, uh, they have like a pretty nice facility and they had like two Olympians that trained there. So I went back one summer and trained with them and thought it'd be a good idea to go back and, and, and train a little bit longer with them. Uh, and so I did that for like about a year and a half. And, uh, yeah, it was a great experience. And again, I got to compete for like qualify for a team and represent Serbia at a competition. And mm. that was like a really neat and like great experience, like 
kind of like full circle, right? From like mm-hmm. those like younger years and watching these athletes represent like their country. And I, I know you understand that as like an uh, American, like how proud you are in that moment to represent your country. And sure. that that's kind of similar in like in Serbia as well. Um, mm-hmm. And I only say that not to say that Canada doesn't have that. It does in certain aspects, but it's not pushed the way that like we here in Canada are like, wow, the American, like when I talk to my swimmers, <laughs> I show them videos of like, and no offense to any Canadians that listen to this, like, I love Canada. <laughs> it's none of that. Um, <laughs> there, There's moments for sure. Like if you watch like hockey and stuff, but like for swimming, it's like the Americans, like you, you, we show them how their team like bonding, like at the Olympic village, they all come together and like, man, they go from like being like, with everyone in terms of like at the same level as everyone and then that bonding happens and then they just like surpass everyone on competition day it's mm-hmm. that like pride so um anyways i got off on a little bit of a tangent but that no, that, that was like full circle like serbia has that similar kind of like feel to it just like a lot smaller of a country why do you think yeah. that is specifically what you just described you said you said that um you know a team can be good, and I'm, I'm I'm paraphrasing, but a team can be good, yeah. and then they had this level of bonding and pride, and they have an opportunity to be great. Why do you think that is? Man, I think it's just like it, the culture that's built in, like for for so many years. Like I experienced it a little bit myself, but like so, <laughs> there's this neat story. I don't know if it like anyone's gonna really care for this story, but I'll, I'll say it anyways. No, like, look, this it, is uh, look. I always tell people just. Quick timeout. I always tell people, you know what? <laughs> if you want to tell a better story, go get your own damn podcast. You know, it's like <laughs> I love it. I love it when people go off on tangents. I'm like, go off on as many tangents as you want. This is the this is the Nemo podcast right now. Okay, so Here, here's here's please here's a story. Like, so this is this is like I, I don't know if you know swimming, you know this story, but mm-hmm. um, uh, and probably if you're like like so American swimming, there's like a really cool story about um, so. In 2008, when Michael Phelps was going for his eight gold medals, one of them was like the four by 100 freestyle relay, which is like one of the most watched YouTube videos. I think I just saw the other day. It has like over a hundred million views. What? Um, a on, swimming video. Yeah. It's yeah, insane. 100, 125 million views. So it was like an epic moment um, where the French were like the favorites to win. Um, and then it was said somewhere which i think was later like found out that was kind of made up so that like phelps would like just be enraged before it (laughs) but like that one of the french swimmers had said we're gonna smash them in this relay okay and so you can think like i think this was his second race or like final um and it was a real like concern like they don't know if they can win this and on that relay they had a veteran jason lezak who um previously i think at the previous olympics so the athens olympics they had not won the four by 100 i think australia Mm -hmm. might have beat them but don't quote me on that um and so he's now like i want to say like 35 years old and uh, he's going to be anchoring the relay so i mean that means he's going to be the last one going and the last guy to go for the french is the current world record holder okay (laughs) Now, side story, Jason Lezak tells this a lot better than I will, but um, he had gotten a written letter from the U.S. Navy that said, if you lose this, you're like to like, again, I don't want to misquote this, like you, you'd be like a disgrace. Don't lose this. Don't lose this. Like this is our like culture. This is the U.S. Like this is our, our race. You lost it in the past. Don't lose it again. And so he tells this story and he's like, I'm on the block and I'm thinking, here's the world record holder and they're diving in first. So they're ahead, the French are ahead with the last 100 to go. And Jason wow. Lezak dives in behind him. And through like this like crazy, you, you have to watch this race. Like I I'm get definitely like, goosebumps watch even talking about it. Like he dives in probably like a half a body length to a body length behind, which is huge to the world record holder. Like you're, you're like, Imagine like being like, like ten meters behind like Usain Bolt. Like you're not gonna catch him. No like, way. So he he dives in, and the French guy just like went out so hard, and then um, 
got stuck on the lane. So what that means is like, he, mm-hmm. instead of swimming down the middle of the lane, he swam to the uh, side of the lane um, next to Jason Lezak. And Lezak, being a veteran, saw that and like moved over. So this is the French guy. Jason saw that, moved over and caught his wave oh, and started shit. to draft. And with 25 meters to go, like even the commentators were like, well, you know, it was a good run. Like, and then you see Jason Lezak start to inch up and they're like, wait a second, hold on. And he out touches them by like, I don't know, I think it was like 0.03 or like five and still has to this day, the fastest 100 split, like in history, he swam 46 seconds, a hundred free on that split, like, and surpassed him. And it was like, it was a crazy moment. But anyways, like to that point, why, how did that happen? Like, it was just that, like, the con- I have the country on my back right now. Mm. I think, like, George W. Bush was in the stands. There was, like, NBA players in the stands. It's like, honestly, like, I got to show up. Like, I don't think the French had that support. And it's that support that, like, it- it's more than – it's more than the name on the uh, on the back. It's the name on the front. It's like mm. when the U.S. competes, they compete for the USA. Like yeah. you hear it them talk about it. I'm like, man, like these guys can be making so much more money. Like sometimes doing these like World Cup events, but they're like, but honestly, I'll go and compete at like the World Champs where I'm not going to make as much money because I'm representing USA. Mm. I'm like, holy crap! Like, and so I think that's just years and years and years of like being like ingrained and like every next generation that comes through like they like really pick a good captain that like passes on that story and like history of like this is the u.s you're representing something way bigger than you you're leaving a mark with what you do like it's more Mm. than just like again your name it's like about like the whole team so i think that just like brings you up to that next level um i get good like man i can go like watch that video and like just jump in a pool and like swim the best time and it's just like that yeah. i don't know what the reason is to be honest i know you asked me like what do you think is the reason like i don't know the exact like i don't know whatever's happening it's about like the adrenaline that you get from that but i think it just that it's just more than just the individual and that's what it becomes mm, it's more than the individual <clears throat> You know, I, I've i heard you talk about this before, and I think this really all kind of ties together. Is like, you know, a lot of people say that working hard and or going after something worthwhile is, you know, there's, there, there's a lot of sacrifices that have to be made as a result of wanting something or achieving something um, of, of stature of, of something that you know yeah people you know people define sport as you know pleasure pain and prize you know it's it's usually you know compromise of, you know of those three things and um you know for to achieve some type of prize to achieve some type of pleasure there's usually a lot of pain and a lot of times that pain is referred to as sacrifice and you know i heard you say earlier that you know sacrifice really isn't maybe the best word for that that investment Mm -hmm. is maybe a better word for that Mm -hmm. and it's i found that interesting because i you know call it call it what it is like when when there are things that maybe you would much much rather do whether that's go out whether that's Honestly, here's how it can be summed up. When you would rather choose comfort over discomfort, I'll just put it that way. Mm. And, and that can apply to a lot of things. Um, there's sacrifice involved. And, you know, I'm constantly amazed and I think mesmerized with athletes that are able to put off present pleasure for really long-term gain. I mean, because there is nothing pleasurable about giving up your Saturday night or your Sunday morning or waking up at 4 a.m. Mm-hmm. There's, I mean, look, maybe there's someone out there that's a much better athlete than me, and I'm sure there is, and much better mindset than me. But, like, 
4 a.m. isn't pleasurable to me. That's like should be against the law to go wake up that early. Right? <laughs> it's just my thoughts, you know, right? Like it's 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 is rough. It is rough, and but yet we you know you hear all these stories of whatever we want to call it, sacrifice investment, where whereas people do that, and pe- not, and not only do they do it for years, but uh, or, or excuse me, months, but they do it for years, and I am constantly and mesmerized and i think that's a really good word for it by people that are able to do that and have that type of success and to your point this is where i think it all ties together you know and i, and I think you said it well it's like it's not the name on the back of the jersey it's name on, or it's it's the it's the flag or the name on the front of the jersey and i think that is a or it can be a metaphor for understanding and internalizing why you do what you do having a purpose behind the pain because there is nothing pleasurable usually in the process that and you know a lot of people talk about this they're like oh well, you know fall in love with the process let me tell you they clearly haven't done anything because that fucking process sucks sometimes let me tell you and it beats you down i mean not just physically like dude i can handle the physical shit Like that, that is what it is. But it's like, like I equate it to like a salt bike sprints or something where you're just on the floor afterwards and you're, you're literally questioning your, your existence. And if you've, and if you've never done a 30 second, like all out assault bike sprint, you owe it to yourself to go question your existence for the next, for the next 15 to 30 minutes of your life. 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. You know what I'm saying? And like, (laughs) it sounds masochistic, but it's really bringing us to a root of, I think what you're talking about and, and what I, I I'm certainly talking about is why do we do what we do? And is it only for prize? Is it only for pleasure or is there something more? Just curious your thoughts on that. So I dabble with this question quite often. I think it's a really important question. Um, I think it transcends just like it, it goes through a lot of topics. Um, mm. So yeah, like everyone's why is a little bit different. Um, sure. But I think some are like not going to be long lasting for fuel and mm. some, some, some will be a little bit more like, like rooted in, in you as a person. I'll give you an example. So, mm-hmm. The transition for me from um, like competing at a high level of swimming and now coaching, um, for a long time I was like labeling myself as an athlete, right? And like I can find an easy why for it. It was like I have this competition coming. Yeah. Um, this is who I am. This is who everyone knows me as. So it, it was easy to like kind of skip out on a Saturday night, you know, and like go to bed early and wake up. And so there's a little bit of that like labeling yourself as like who you are as a person um, Mm. that gives you some of that fuel of like, that's who I am as a person, you know, like people know me as a swimmer. So I'm going to get up and keep doing that. And when that shifts Mm -hmm. over, um, you start to like question like, okay, like what do I, what's my why for anything? Right. Mm. Um, I want to stay to your question as much as I can. No, 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 no. Take it, take it. No, I know you say it. Yeah. Um, but I think, so I never, I never qualify. I hate to like use myself as an example always. Um, but I think some of those experiences like just like hit home the most. So I never made an Olympic team. I made Olympic trials. I went to, I final that Olympic trials, but I never made the Olympic team. And the first thoughts when that happens to you is like, dang, like I worked for this one like moment to make the Olympic team, right? Like this is like the pinnacle of my sport. Um, and luckily I had a good coach and mentor that had said like, remember it was like making the Olympics, like, and this is his words, like maybe someone will disagree to this, but like it was a cherry on top of the cake. Um, and he was right. Like all the things that I talk about now are about the pursuit of that goal. Mm. So back to your question of the why, and I still carry that to this day. And I think that's like the difference between like the prize, which is like make the Olympics, be on the podium, like get your five minutes of fame, right? Or like 
I'm sure if you ask like Phelps or any, any of those top like level athletes in any sport, they'll tell you like, man, like they'll remember like the hard moments, like mm. the getting up early, um, the pursuit that was worth it. Right. So for me, that's like kind of been like some self exploration that I've had recently. It's, I still compete like in triathlon more for fun than like the way that I was competing before. But like, I asked myself like, why do you do this? Like, it doesn't I don't make money off of like racing mm. triathlons with like other like enthusiasts. Like <laughs> some days I'll like bike for two hours. Like, no, seriously, like these like questions, like I'll, I'll be doing like, like you said, like a sprint and an assault bike. And you're like, why am I doing this? Like, like no one's going to give me like money for doing a 30 second assault bike sprint. Right. Mm. So that like, that's a cheap prize. Like, like, and it, even if they did like, okay, you got paid in that. Like, so at some point, like that would like, run out and you'd be like not not in terms of like that as motivation right like it would always yeah, have to it. be like up 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 like maybe i give you like a dollar today and tomorrow you're like dollar's not enough i want two and where does that end right mm, um so good versus versus the pursuit so for me like um without sounding too cheesy it's like that pursuit of excellence is so much more important mm. right um it's like the lessons gained from that are so like, like they transcend everything. And I, mm. you can get it in other places, but I found that sport is so good at that, at equalizing it. It's like work put in, you get it out. And it's not like instant gratification. Like you said, like the delayed gratification. It's so far down the line that like, so it's not even worth it some days. Like, like I said, like you'll, I'll be out there for like two hours and then cycling. I'm like, why? Why am I doing this alone? Like, I'm like in the middle of nowhere and I like, I look around, but I'm like, but this is awesome. Like, because mm -hmm. like, it's just like, what else would put me in this like condition where it's just like, I have to like battle my mind at times. And like, it always feels great when you're done, but in the moment is like where all the learning happens. It's like, mm -hmm. you're having to like battle, whatever you're getting caught in the rain or what, like, it's just like so many things happen. And it's just that, that pursuit that like is so important and it's not cheap and it's like, real high quality fuel and that's that's what i think is like should be most people's why it shouldn't be like the pr the prize is great and like of course people make careers out of out of uh, being athletes but i think those that are just focused on that and i don't blame them like some people just you know need to put like you know food on the table and that's their means but um it, it doesn't last after that. Like if you didn't mm. learn that the, the, the pursuit was the important part, like you see athletes that leave sport and blow all their money and like, you know, never like move on to something else. And it's sad to see actually that mm. like you missed the point, you missed the message. Right. So I don't know if that answered your question, but like. The, the, there's so many things that came to mind on. Um... <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, really. Well, what you just said, I mean, there's the, there's the idea of, and I think, I don't know if Ben Bergeron said, I don't know. I, I've, I've heard it from him, but I don't know right. if, if this was unique to him, but, um, it's the idea of climbing or, or, or scaling a building with a ladder only to find out that your ladder is on the wrong building that you get to the top right. of the <laughs> building and you go, Oh shit. I was supposed to be one over. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I, I told this story, well, I didn't tell this story, but I told something, uh, something similar last week. Uh, there's a, speaking of the Olympics, there's a, there's a kid living with my wife and I, who's training for the Olympics here uh, where I live in Birmingham, Alabama, and he's a javelin thrower and there's not a lot of money in throwing a javelin if, you know, I mean, in Europe, it's a little bit different. But in the States, um, no one really cares. I mean, that's just like, right. it's just, it just is what it is. It's, it's, you know, and it, he, and he is, and he's taken that on like full, full, uh, full speed. And I freaking love it. And I was talking to him the other day about this. Um, because like, I, like part of me feels like there's like an opera, like, and I don't know I'm, anyone that coaches, I, I think really feels this. It's like, you want to pass on these lessons that like you've learned. Like you, you almost feel a moral obligation to like pass on these things. Kind of like what you were saying about like 
when the U.S. is picking like captains for their swim team. They they want to pass mm-hmm. on that captainship or that that flag, so to speak, to someone that embodies the things that that they embody. And you know, I I, I kind of sometimes feel the same way about the people that I coach. Like I, I want to pass on these things. And they can pick and choose what they embody, right? Because they're obviously unique people and with their own identities. And I was telling him this. I said, you know, it's so difficult in the moment when you're when you're scaling the mountain and the peak seems so far away. I said, it's so difficult to really believe what I'm about to say, which is this, that that to your point, That true happiness, like if you, and this is my opinion, if you really want to be happiness, happiness is found between the peaks of the mountain. And it's Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. contrary to what the world preaches. It's so contrary to think that, you know, everyone says peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, you know, you got to go through the valley to get to the peak, right? And you even hear this in like religion, right? So, you know, um, Mm -hmm. or, or, or even, I don't know if it's Tupac. I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death. I don't know if that's Tupac, but anyways, <laughs> yeah. Biggie Smalls. I don't know. I'm about to get roasted when this comes out because someone's like, you didn't know who that <laughs> Anyways, it doesn't matter. We're leaving it in there. The point is, here's the point I'm making, is that I I think like, yes, do I think you can be happy when you achieve a prize? Of course I think you can be happy. I, I think those people's fame and, 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 and money and standing on top of that podium does attribute to a percentage of happiness, hundred percent. Like I would, uh, I would be silly if I said, "Oh, it makes them unhappy." Now, I think what you do with it can make you unhappy, sh- certainly, or how you deal with it can mm-hmm. make you unhappy, certainly. But in, in the moment, do I, do, like, do I think that's like they're pretty freaking excited because they won and their hard work paid off? Yeah, because they're competitors, of course. But as you said, right. it's obviously fleeting. So, you know, my message to him was this because he was he, he was talking about you know you know he you know he needs to throw you know, a certain amount of meters and, and, you know, he made the Olympic trials last year, but he didn't qualify to the you know Olympics. And so he needs to throw X amount of meters and he's you know, pretty close and this and third. And, and, you know, he was just kind of like, you know, right. I'm just keeping my head down. And I was like, you know, I, th- I think that's, I think that's really smart. And I said, I said, I think when you can, cause he, cause he kept saying like, I'll be happy when I throw X, Y, Z meters. And I was like, why is that? Mm-hmm. He was like, well, cause that's, what's going to get me to the Olympics. Like I know if I throw 85, like I'm going to the Olympics, like no questions because that's where, you know, mm-hmm. or if I swim this hundred meters in X amount of seconds, I'm going to the Olympics. Like there's metrics. I know if I can clean and jerk this and my frame mm-hmm. time is this, like I can make it to the crossing games metrics. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, how, and I, I was explaining to him, you know, there's lead metrics and there's lagging metrics. Lagging mm-hmm. metrics are a result of something. And I said, what you're telling me is that I'm going to be happy when I threw 85. I said, what if you reverse that? Mm-hmm. What if the, what if the lead metric, the, the happiness metric was in fact the process of going out every single day and giving it hell? What if as you were climbing the peak, as you were climbing the mountain, you were in between the peaks that you found happiness, you found true happiness in, in the fact that you're in your twenties and you're getting to pursue sport full time and you've got people around you that are willing to help mm-hmm. you and support you and like truly finding gratitude in that moment of what is around you and having the support group. I talk about this a lot because I, I just believe it's so it's like the number one important thing is having the right people around you. Uh, you know, I said, what if what if what if that was the metric? And then everything that you mm-hmm. did out of that was was an overflow, was an overflowing of that gratitude, was an overflowing of your joy and your happiness. I said, doesn't that sound like freedom to you? I said, it, I said to me, it, and I said, this is just me. I said, to me, it sounds like I'm shackling myself to, you know, in his case, 85 meters, I'm shackling myself and I'm truly not free. Like I've, I've said, I'm not happy until 85 and I'm 79 or whatever. You know, and right. he, he just like chewed on that. And he was like, I've just never heard it. I, I've never heard it put that way. And I don't think I'm some like philosopher or no bullshit like that. I just think that, that, that sometimes, and I'm sure you, you know this all too well. It's like, you can hear something over and over again, but it's like, you have to have the right amount of Ram 
or storage available. Like these singe moments have to be the right amount of free space in your head and then right timing of opportunity to really mm-hmm. set in. And mm-hmm. I just, and I, and I know we've gone on this crazy wild ride <laughs> tangent and rabbit hole and we've pulled back several layers of the onion, but I just like, I re and it's, and, and I'm passionate about it because I, cause I deal with it a lot too. It's something that as an athlete, j- just like you're saying, I don't, I don't get paid to do this. Yeah. So, so why do I do it? And I think about this a lot. Like I think about what makes me happy. And I don't think enough people ask themselves, does, does me pursuing this goal, does the pursuit and the effort that it takes for this thing that I say that I want, does it actually make me happy? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just something yeah. I think about. It's it, no, not to kind of like piece it all together. Like I do, think one thing's really important to note and you need both right mm. you need the tangible you need the peak to know that there's a valley mm. and to appreciate the valley that's so good. without a peak then you're well like walking on flat ground <laughs> that's good that's so good you, that's good all right that's that's all i would say yeah. mm. that's good you know and we're talking a lot about you know how do you how do you define success how do you define wins and um you know something that i heard you you say and i'm curious to see if you still believe this and or um as as i often do i continue to evolve and i think it takes you know people will say oh well you know you said this 3 years ago you know i don't you know, do you not believe it no like i like i change like, and I'm willing to say, I don't think that anymore, you know? And so anyways, uh, I heard you say something. You said, you know, there's four kind of pillars of success. Um, there's intent, there's vision, there's action, and there's clarity. Um, mm-hmm. Looking back on that now, and I don't know when that was recorded, where, where I got that piece. It might have been, you know, six months ago. I don't know. But, um, mm-hmm. like, is that, as you've coached more and as you've developed more, is that something that you still believe? Intent, vision, action, and clarity, or would you change anything? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I go back to those pillars. I mean, they're, they're always kind of like, they're fluid in some ways and trying to think, yeah, I I think I still stand by like those pillars. I don't think maybe there's more that I've added along the way. Um, and to your point, it's like always changing. Where do you need more support from what pillar is, it's probably like Mm. where I would say like is the change that I've made. And it's sometimes like you need more vision, sometimes more clarity and the intent. And, and so I think some of that might've been, but like, I, I think I, I would still, still say I stick to, to a lot of that, that notion. I, I know what you're talking about where I said it. Yeah. I, yeah. It was like probably like around 2016. So yeah. Um, I would say, yeah, I, I'm still very much, um, into that idea you said there's certain times you feel like that you have to lean on more or one more than the other uh, in this stage of your mm-hmm. life where do you think you lean on one more than the other right now dang that was a deep question right there <laughs> um you set me up man yeah no i'm just trying to i think right now for me is like vision right mm. and to like um it's yeah uh, i i think that's where i'm at right now it's like again constantly like uh flowing from one to the other and like but for me right now it's just like vision um i think maybe because some of it was uh clouded through some of this pandemic or Mm -hmm. whatever like um so now just like being very um just like creating that vision again and then the others will follow along Mm. um I think that's where I am right now. I think right before this all hit, it we had like you know certain things in play. I we had just started working with Brute, and I wanted to see some some of these athletes perform on their like first round at like a swim event, specifically because Sanctionals had swim events, and I was like, okay, great, like I can see what this work does with like these really high level athletes, and then all of that got shut down and it wasn't until like 
the CrossFit Games this past year that that I got to see some of that work uh, put into play through like Lazar Jukic and Emma Carey, mm. and and it worked. Um, but you know, uh, I'm always like, I have, I feel like I have imposter syndrome at times, mm. where I, I I still need more proof, and I want like, so I'm always questioning, right? I'm like, well, it's Emma Carey, like, <laughs> she, it's like. I want I want to like take someone that like you know is a little bit of a different personality and and then I always get like I get comments about Lazar Jukic um, even though if you ask him he's he'll tell you that water polo swimming and swimming swimming is totally different but everyone thinks that because he was a water polo player it's like a given that he'll do well mm. um, not to say it doesn't help but <clears throat> anyways uh, so right now uh, I'm really excited to see what happens at dcc first even though it's those two athletes again <laughs> competing first but then Wadapalooza uh is like huge right we have of course pretty much all all these brute athletes going that that i've had a like pleasure to work with so to really see and to showcase like what like the swim programming does and like you know when you have it like designed well so yeah that's kind of like where i'm at right now but yeah you man this is like a whole podcast <clears throat> go uh, ahead it, you can split into two if you <laughs> it, it, no no this is this is good we don't we don't uh we don't mind going uh yeah we don't we don't mind going long i mean i'm not like uh joe rogan long i don't do which by the way <laughs> for anybody out there to talk to someone for three hours with right. no daylight because it's all black it's like a black box the joe rogan podcast uh there's no clocks yeah. there's no phones in there like he truly as someone that asks people questions he truly impresses me um that he's just he's a, he's a natural anyways not to go off on a tangent but dude i'll th 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 just to tell you you've been improving like like i'm I told I was talking to Rob. Uh, I don't know if anyone you and I know who Rob is. Rob Muse. Rob and, is the man. Uh, I'm a, yeah. <laughs> if you get to meet Rob, you'll you'll know what we're talking about. Um, so I was saying I'm like, man, Micah has really been improving, and uh, I'll tell you my ultimate test for you was well, not I didn't put the test in front of you, but I was like, all right, this is a good one. When you got to interview Pat. I was like, all right, this is the test to see where he's at, his interview skills, because Pat's not an easy interview. Like, he has a lot to say, but he's like, he'll challenge you on your thoughts. Um, and you did that really well. Like, knowing the guy personally, mm. like, you did that well. So, hats off. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Pat was amazing. Uh, he was a really awesome guest. Uh, I, we had a lot of fun. And, you know, I think... And I, and, I, and I, well, first of all, thank you for the compliment. I, I don't want to, I'm um, sometimes poor at accepting compliments. Um, I okay. think that's a type A personality, <laughs> always want to do it better. But, you know, something that I really try to do is, I think there are a lot of podcasts that do a great job. Um, but I think the downside is they like ask the same questions, right? It's the same, like, how'd you get into right. CrossFit? And I think like, what I've challenged myself with is be more naturally. And this is hard because you, because this is like a learned behavior, like try to be more naturally curious, mm -hmm. like ask a question and give people space to talk. And sometimes you, you may not get what you want because they're going to be guarded or they don't know you or whatever. Spoiler alert. No one really knows me on the show. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we text before, <laughs> but like, I just kind of have to do some homework and I think like, it's just helped me, doing some homework has just helped me be a more naturally curious person. And I think in a day and age where we have Google at our fingertips and we don't really have to be naturally curious, we can literally ask Siri for the answer on our iPhones. Like there's, there's no curiosity in that. There's just like the answer, like this is what it is. It's, it's right. binary. It's ones and zeros. And so I think I tried a lot to really focus on just getting to know the human and, not worrying about like, Hey, this is the agenda or having these 10 questions that I want to ask, but just like, 
hey, I want to get to know you as a person and I want to know about your childhood and I want to know about what keeps you up at night. And and if that's if that's what sells clicks, then great. And if it doesn't, like I had a great time. I had a great 90 minutes talking to you. So who cares? Right. So. No, I agree. Anyway, sorry for the tangent. Sorry for everyone listening. You had to <laughs> no. listen to that, but I'm not cutting it out. Hey, take your own advice, man. Just <laughs> let it be. <laughs> that's right. All right. So I wanted to get back to imposter syndrome. Yeah. And, and the reason why I wanted to get back to this mm-hmm. is because I'll never forget like the first, like I say real job that I had like that. That's my gosh. Did I feel that? Oh my gosh. I, I'll never forget sitting in the office. It, it, was, it was running gyms actually. Um, it was, it was, right. it was, it was over two gyms and in, in North Carolina and I'll never forget in the office. And I was like, Oh my God, these people are a older than I am. B they're more qualified. Like they have more letters behind their name. They, they like did all these things and, and here I am and I'm supposed to be the guy leading them. And I'm like, what the F and I, I remember I became obsessive and like, like definitely OCD. I was obsessive compulsive about like learning because I, I thought, well, that's the only way I can feel good enough is if I just pour my life and heart into just learning as much as I can and I'm grateful for that because I, I did learn a lot, but, um, but that's how I dealt with it. And it was just, it was kind of interesting. And, um, so when you said that you dealt with imposter syndrome, I'm, I'm curious to hear like the story behind this and your experience with it, because it's something that I think a lot of people really, including myself, really struggle with. Yeah, I think it's, it's not necessarily a negative always. Uh, if it like controls you um, and your day to day mm. actions to the point where it like becomes detrimental, like yeah, then then it's not good, right? Like it, or if it like makes you, uh, for lack of a better term, take less risks, yeah, that that's not good, right? Like if you're constantly like, okay, like I don't belong here, like I definitely have to take a step back. But if you're like, it has to kind of be in your like peripheral vision. Uh, all right, yeah, like I'm challenged here. This is new. This is different. Like. Some of these people maybe are more qualified um, and then you step up like what Mm -hmm. you did, I think, is not a bad thing. Right. You 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 were aware of your surroundings. You you knew who you were working with and you didn't want to let them down. Right. Like that, in my mind, is like an amazing work environment. Right. Mm -hmm. Like one that like challenges. But obviously you have to have like a sense of like collaboration the way I've experienced it. so I, if you come to me and you're like, like you, um, gave an example of a swimmer body, like, you know, six foot, like thin and wiry, I can make you fast, like pretty quickly <laughs> with like a few things. Uh, um, and, and so I knew how to do that. Um, what I like to do often, and I, I don't know if this happened, like it happened by chance at first and like also like good mentorship, like of my coaches who then I worked under putting me in really unique positions to coach different kinds of people and then Mm. I just like got curious and started coaching different kinds of people so like I have pretty much at this point coached like whatever I learned to swim first like kid to like an 80 year old learning to swim wow um yeah so I've gone through like the whole spectrum and and you can't just like copy paste one from the other uh and the now quite frankly when i get a new opportunity to work with someone that just like is a challenge i get excited about it like Mm. i get excited to be like uncomfortable about not quite knowing how to finish this puzzle like i'm like wow this puzzle is just a sky and it's all like blue and i have to figure out what blue goes where (laughs) and it's like and that's exciting you know like i'm like great analogy damn like this will be fun (laughs) Um, also I'm colorblind, so maybe a terrible analogy <laughs> for a colorblind person, but, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> maybe that's where my mind goes. That's what, that's the reason. But, uh, yeah. So like, I love it. Like, um, so with CrossFitters, like I remember the first time, so the story behind, like people ask me, like, how did you work with Pat, Pat Vellner? Yeah. <laughs> so he was working out in the gym that I was going to after i stopped swimming i i immediately joined the crossfit gym because i'm like this is the 
fittest I'll ever be. And I'm not letting that go. So let's just try this thing. And I had known about CrossFit for some time. Um, and so I joined that gym. Pat was there. I think it was like the first year that he competed individually. So I'm like heard about his swimming wasn't like that great. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the next year, uh, I think he came like almost last in the swim event. It was yep. the first year in Madison. That's correct. Um, and so I pro, but he came in second over like, second or third that year. I yeah. can't remember. Yeah. He podiumed. Um, third, right. third, third, third. Yeah. Yeah. He podiumed. So he still like somehow manages to get back. Um, but, so that year he came back and I had really watched his swim and um, I approached him like we had known each other um, and I was coaching some CrossFitters in the gym because I really wanted to know how do you make someone that has a really like um, like a lot of weight sitting in their legs to mm. swim properly, right? Because like it's usually their hips and legs that sink. And so like um, I, I was like, okay, let's try it out so i invited a bunch of crossfitters and to like a lane swim and i was coaching i'm like okay that works that does it um and then a few teams were going to waterpalooza and started coaching them and at the same time i'm like well fat swimming isn't great uh and he's like a high caliber athlete and he'll he he has like all the reason to invest in this right now so i approached him i said hey you want to have a meeting at like 7 a.m and i'll tell you how i can improve your swimming and he's like yep sure and at that time he was like in Cairo school and like training full time. So he's like, I have a min window of like 10 minutes before, like right before I start my warm up. Or like, he's like, I'll be warming up at this time. So come to the gym and like, we'll talk. Right. So I went to the gym and he's a really relaxed guy, as you know, like yeah. really like down to earth. Like you never feel like there's like this weird tension. But sure. at the same time, he's, he's, he knows his, like, his stuff. Like, and he, he does. He'll question you on it. So I had this whole like pitch and proposal of like, this is what you did last year. This is where like your competitors are at. And I think this methodology would work best for you to get there the fastest. And I think he's like a numbers guy. He's not a like, you know, we're going to kick a little bit and we're going to work your aerobic endurance. And like, and hopefully at the end of all of this, he's, I, <laughs> I like literally just laid it down in numbers. I'm like, this is where you're at. You have to swim this pace to be up to that. In order to do that, yeah, there's some technical things, but you have to be able to do this regularly and make it feel easy. <clears throat> so he's like, all right, let's do it. So he would come out every Sunday. And that was that was kind of like the first time I felt like that imposter syndrome at first. I'm like, I'm yeah. dealing with someone that makes a living off of this and I can't ruin it um, or like can't screw it up. Mm -hmm. So you always have that thought in your mind, but I think eventually you learn to just like, again, keep it in your peripheral vision. Right. And I don't think it's about suppressing it. So to your question, like, how do you handle it? Like, I think that's probably the best way. It's like, yeah, like let it, let it live where in your space, mm. but don't let it control you. Right. So that was it. Like, it's okay. Like you, you mess up. Yeah. It's, not the greatest but it might happen and you just got to live with it and learn and like i think any like normal person will understand that if you're giving your all to it and even if it doesn't work out it's like hey man like he's trying right like he's doing everything he can but if you're like okay i'm gonna take on this role and then let's like screw off like yeah then there's reason for someone to be upset at you for for not you know trying but that that's how i deal with it i like constantly keep it there it like kind of like humbles me and also like keeps mm. me in check it's like um i like it i like that feeling so i i constantly but I, I recently started to coach like a new group of master athletes um in swimming and it's like totally new group doesn't know me and i love that feeling because i get to like slowly talk to them get them to like know me as a coach you know like my visions on some things and if you've ever worked with master athletes or they, they they're really like this is what I know how to do. And I'm only going to do it this way. And like, yep. you can't teach me this new skill. And, and I love that challenge because I like, I'll still get paid at the end of the day to just sit and be like, good job. Like keep doing that. <laughs> but I, I refuse to do that. I'm like, okay, we're going to change your, like, for example, in swimming body position, even though you've been swimming like this forever, I'm going to slowly, slowly creep my way in. Like I plant a seed and then I wait 
And then slowly they start to question that. And then they're like, wait, that, that doesn't sound so bad. And anyways, so that, that's how I do it. I like, I put myself in the position to feel that imposter syndrome and then just to the sides focus. And then I can see it here, man. That's really good. Have you ever, and maybe they've, and I know the pandemic and all that kind of probably put a hold on this, but have they ever, they being brute, have they ever like tried to get you like to do like a camp? like a swim camp is that even a thing yeah we're we're talking about it uh it was gonna we were gonna do something along those lines and then again covid and now we're thinking about as you know matt torres has like his whole posse of like elites coming to to florida it's gonna be insane and you know that's like one of the meccas of swimming and they have pools like like a stone's throw away in every every direction so um we're thinking about doing something down there in naples um as soon as like they all settle in so that would be great like one for the elites and then one for like just like the open like public um of crossfitters hey come down train for a weekend we've done it here a few times but never through brute cool let me know when that happens because uh i'm sure it's going to be in the in the when it gets a little bit warmer i mean not that it's cold and Well, it is kind of cold in Florida right now. I mean, it's if you're swimming outside, it's cold. We'll we'll, we'll put it that way. We Uh, go to Florida during the winter break sometimes for for like like warm weather training because there's snow outside here right now. (laughs) Uh, I'm look okay. Here's a (laughs) here you you want to know the irony of all this? So, um my my family is in the pool business yeah 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 Yo, that's right rob rob sent that text message yeah yeah that's right yeah <laughs> um and like i can swim okay like if you throw me in right. i will not drown i can i can definitely do some laps like i'm like i'm good it's right. i'm like most crossfitters that try to swim though my my hips just keep sinking and sinking and sinking and sinking because mm. you know anyways so when i so when i got married uh, my wife, who is a much better CrossFitter than me, um, she's really good. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she's like, hey, you know, I got this competition coming up. Like, we got to swim. And so right. we're going we're, – so we're going to the neighborhood pool. And, like, I'm just trying to teach her the basic shit that I know. Just, like, body position, front – I mean, like, I know some very basic stuff. And I'm, like, that's all yeah. I'm w- willing to, like, teach somebody because I will be the first to raise my hand and say, I don't know what I don't know. But she's like – wait, you stick your head in the water? And I was like, yeah, you have to put your face in the water. She's like, (laughs) well, I can't do that. I was like, what do you mean you can't do that? She's like, well, when I was a kid, my dad gave me the goggles with like the little nose thing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. She's like, well, Mm -hmm. I have to hold my nose. I was like, well, how do you swim? So she swims. I'm going to try to do this for you. Mm -hmm. Head craned up like that. Is, mm-hmm. is is how she swims. And, and I was like, how do you survive? She goes, well, I just typically just doggy paddle my way out there. And I was like, oh, my God, yes. So uh, needless to say, when you decide you're going to come to Naples, uh, I will I will pay for you to then fly to Birmingham uh, so you can give my wife private swimming lessons. Yeah, <laughs> for, no problem. For, 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 for a weekend, then I'll fly you back to Canada <laughs> because, <laughs> because she is bad. <laughs> So when she listens to this, she's going to be like pissed, yeah. but it's okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyways. Um, all right, Nemo. So where, um, if people want to work with you and assuming that they're not brute athletes, um, yeah. listening to this and people are like, oh, wow, I have Wadapalooza coming up or, oh, wow, I have yeah. this competition coming up and they go, oh, we should work with someone because there's not caveat this is from my experience of looking for swim coaches as well. There's not a lot of swim coaches that deal specifically with CrossFitters. There's coaches, there's CrossFit coaches that know swimming, but like you're yeah. unique and maybe I'm putting like yeah. words in your mouth or your, your philosophies, but I feel like you're unique in the sense that you work not just with CrossFitters, but like, I feel like you have a specialty because you, you do CrossFit and then you were a high yeah. level swimmer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. where can people uh, get in touch yeah, with you? They- yeah, they can. Well, if you're a brute athlete, you can get in touch. We we have a program there, but um, 
they can get in touch with us at train sink or swim.com. Uh, so we use true coach for our athletes. So if you have a, if you ever use true coach, um, we have like three program options. So one's like a maintenance, like once a week or like a beginner level. Like if you can't just commit the time, which is what a lot of CrossFitters do at first. So just doing once a week of swimming that's structured, then there's like twice a week and three times a week, which often we don't see a lot with CrossFitters, but like the two or one, um, is what you can sign up for. So you get just, yeah, that's where you can find us a variety of sessions. Um, the one thing that like why we use true coach is like, we do a lot of video feedback and stuff. So if you ever done that, like that, that's the way that we do remote coaching. Um, it works really well. Um, so yeah, trainsinkerswim.com. And then also on Instagram, it's the same thing. We actually put out like a free workout every week uh, that you can go on our website and then see like all the coaches notes and stuff like that. So if you've ever like wondered what like a workout looks like, mm. you can find it there. Um, except for like when you do sign up with us, like, like I said, I'm a very much into paces and a number is guys. So like the thing that the benefit that you get with working with us is that I'll like put you right through like all your paces, which are individual to you versus mm. like, you mm. know, like go like moderate like no 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 you're going at like this pace and that's like your 80 percent of your like goal oh. time so <clears throat> yeah yeah i've yeah the swim training i've done is has has kind of been like fast easy moderate if anyone's ever done like the henshaw yeah. like aerobic capacity and like yeah i have yeah. no like i mean yeah like i like i have a a 5k time and i like like i have some times but like yeah. i i yeah that sounds and, and i'm not blowing smoke up your skirt i, I yeah. use that southern saying a lot but um yeah like i would rather have that. it's just me i'm just thinking i'd rather have that and someone says yeah. hey I, I, I need you to hit this split on this 50 then yeah. yeah like i have no idea like well i think my splits are the same like I, anyways and like i'm sure you see that but a that's lot. a beauty yeah but that that's why actually you know that's how we started working with brute was when i was looking to kind of work with um a program in company uh i was looking for those that like brute stood out right away because of like all the coaches that are involved it's not just like one coach and that that's sometimes can be the problem with like other places where it's one person coaching swimming running and all of that and like it's like you can't really get like super specific so mm. um and and you've seen like the crosser world has changed so much in that aspect like if you want to improve, you have to like, for the most part, know like your strengths and weaknesses and like your percentage. It's so different. So totally. that that's that that's like I I rarely will put if ever like go hard. <laughs> what is hard? <laughs> what does hard mean? Like, and like what? So pace is really important um, in progressing in swimming. Mm, that's good, man. Nemo, this was uh, an absolute pleasure. I'm glad we got into some stuff that uh, you know yeah. is 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 not on the interwebs. We got some exclusive content on the Bruce Strength podcast. You know, what I'm no, saying? no, some great questions. I enjoy it. Yeah, awesome. Is there anything uh, you want to add before we get off? No, no, uh, just like yeah, well, look out for the brute athletes at Waterpalooza. Uh, if you, you know don't believe in the in the power <laughs> of having structured swims wait to see that and uh yeah no i'm excited to watch that and and dcc in two weeks emma will be competing that's right so that'll be fun awesome yeah. man thanks again for your time dude right. and we'll see you soon